We continue with pedigree diagrams in the top right hand corner you'll find featured the previous video which discussed the structure of a pedigree diagram. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the analysis of a pedigree diagram for an autosomal recessive disorder. So the first step is to read the information that's given. You identify the alleles, which one is dominant, which one is recessive, which letters are going to be used. And you'd also look at the key, and from the key, it will indicate the phenotypes of the various individuals that are shown there. Now, if you read this information, it's talking about albinism. Albinism is a disorder where the body does not produce melanin, the pigment that is supposed to give the color to the skin and to the hair. So it's autosomal recessive, which means that it's carried on the autosomes, not on the gonosomes or the sex chromosomes. So it's not carried on the X or Y chromosome. Since it's a recessive disorder, we'll indicate albinism with a small letter allele, and the dominant normal allele would be represented by the capital letter A. Now, from Mendel's law of dominance, we know that a normal individual if you, they display the normal phenotype, they could have one of two possible genotypes. They could either be homozygous normal, that's having two capital letter A's, or they could be heterozygous, having a normal dominant allele, as well as a recessive one for albinism. However, a person that is displaying albinism as their phenotype, we are guaranteed that their genotype would be homozygous recessive, having two of the same recessive alleles for albinism. We represent it as two small letter A's. Now using that information for the next step, we're gonna fill in all of the recessive individuals first as being homozygous recessive because we are sure of their genotype. So on this particular pedigree diagram, we know that uh, all of the individuals that are shaded in, in green, these ones have albinism number one, number eight, number 13, and number 14 will fill in two small letter A's because we are sure of their genotype. The third step, the normal parents of the recessive individuals must be heterozygous. So if we look here, individual number one and number eight, their parents are not indicated, but individuals number 13 and 14, they share the same parents. So if you're looking at number 13, it has two small letter A's, one of them would have come from the mother, number eight, and the other one had to come from the father, which is number seven. And number seven being a normal individual, he has to have the dominant allele as well. So number seven has to be homo heterozygous. There's no way in which it could have been homozygous. If it had two of the capital letter A's, there's no way in which he could have had offspring number 13 and 14, which have albinism. The next step is that the children of the recessive individuals must also be heterozygous. Right, so if you look at number one, the, she has four children that are indicated here. All of these children had to inherit one allele from the mother and one from the father so all of them, number four has to get one of these alleles for albinism, number five also, number six also, number seven, we've already calculated the genotype for them. But all of these individuals being normal, that means that they have a capital letter, a normal allele also, which will overpower and dominate the allele for albinism. Then if you look at number eight, uh, she has the offspring number 12, Number 12 also in a similar way had to inherit one allele from the father, which is normal, made it normal. And the other allele would have come from the mother number eight. And this makes number 12 also heterozygous. So all of the offspring of a recessive individual that are having the dominant phenotype will always be heterozygous. Now the remaining individuals in step five, they, their remaining individuals could either be homozygous or heterozygous. So here we won't be sure. And if you asked about the genotype, you'd say that they are either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So 
either they have two capital letters or a capital and a small, an allele for normal, and an allele for albinism, or two alleles for normal. Right, so number two, number three, nine, 10, and 11, we are not sure of the genotype. And therefore we'd say that it could be one of these two. It's only if they have a child or a parent that has albinism, then we'll be certain that they do have a heterozygous condition. Now for number two, for example, considering that all of the children have inherited a capital letter A from number two, there's a greater chance that it would be homozygous, but it's not a guarantee because your sample size is quite small, but four. Right? If there were maybe if Mendel, when he did with plants, there were hundreds of plants, then you could be more certain of that. Uh, it's similar to the case where you have a male and a female, the percentage chance of male and female offspring would be 50, 50% chance, but you do get incidents where a pair of parents get four uh, sons and if those four children are all sons they've all inherited the y from the father does not mean that the father has two y chromosomes no it's just that each time that a child is born there's again a 50 50 chance and by luck or probability it happened to be the case please like comment and subscribe if you've got any questions feel free to comment in the comment section and we'll see to answering those.